Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast DeBent County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 68. This is the Friday, September 3rd, 2021 edition of Library Connections. Library Connections videos premiere on Facebook Fridays at 1 p.m. and may also be found on the Southeast Stabend County Library's YouTube channel where you can access them on demand. And jumping in with the top five fiction bestsellers of the week from the New York Times. At number one, we have the new Louise Penny mystery, The Madness of Crowds. This is the 17th book in the Chief Inspector Gamache series. Gamache is tasked with providing security for a statistics professor whose views are repulsive to him. At number two, Billy Summers by Stephen King. A killer for hire who only takes out bad guys seeks redemption as he does one final job. At number three, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife raised in a violent home attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number four, The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. Hannah Hall discovers truths about her missing husband and bonds with his daughter from a previous relationship. And rounding out the top five, The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Opposites Poppy and Alex meet to vacation together one more time in hopes of saving their relationship. And on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week. At number one, American Marxism by Mark Levin. The Fox News host gives his take on the Green New Deal, critical race theory, and social activism. At number two, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk how trauma affects the body and mind, and innovative treatments for recovery. At number three, The Long Slide by Tucker Carlson. A collection of previously published essays from 1995 to 2016 by the Fox News host. At number four, Hero of Two Worlds, by Mike Duncan. An overview of the Marquis de Lafayette's career on both sides of the Atlantic during the Age of Revolution. And at number five, Dopamine Nation by Anna Lembeck, the medical director of Stanford Addiction Medicine, explores the neuroscience and behaviors that inform the relationship between pleasure and pain. Our first reading recommendation for this week is the terrific novel, The Emperor of Ocean Park by Stephen L. Carter. This suspenseful tale of ambition, revenge, and the power of familial obligations is set in the privileged environs of an Ivy League law school, Martha's Vineyard, and Washington, D.C. Oliver Garland is the demanding but emotionally distant patriarch of an elite, affluent African-American family used to special privileges and close relationships with the powerful in government, business, and the criminal underworld. Oliver's death sparks renewed interest in his political career 
as a vitriolic conservative embittered by a failed bid for the U.S. Supreme Court. And there is also concern in many quarters about arrangements that he made in the event of his demise. Garland's son Talcott, a law professor, is very reluctantly drawn into the intrigue. If he pursues the enticing mystery set in motion by his father, Tal risks his marriage, his career, and possibly even his life. And in the course of discovering his father's shortcomings, Tal must own up to his own. Legal minds and power brokers debate race, class, economics, feminism, abortion rights, morality, and religion as they jockey for position in the academy and on the bench, and they either foil or further Tal's efforts to solve the mystery of his and his father's lives. So if you're looking for a top-notch legal thriller, check out The Emperor of Ocean Park. Our second recommended read for this week is the new novel, The Guide, by Peter Heller. Jack, the rustic, if Ivy League educated hero of this captivating thriller from Edgar finalist Heller, takes a job as a seasonal fishing guide at Colorado's posh Kingfisher Lodge in an effort to escape his traumatic past and the tedium of his father's ranch. Once there, he's quickly warned about the trigger-happy old man who lives on the property next door. And soon, strange things about the Kingfisher are enough to get Jack wary of the whole scene, including strict rules, guests who don't fish, and lots of cameras. Out on the river with a celebrity client, singer Allison Kay, Jack gets a warning shot from the warned about neighbor, prompting the pair to investigate and unravel a truly heinous crime. Heller's lush descriptions of fishing and river country are matched with a riveting, surprising mystery that captures the difference between the filthy rich and everyone else. The novel's speculative approach to the lingering effects of COVID-19 is frightening in its subtlety and it's one of the book's special charms. Readers looking for a credible couple and a story of redemption will love this. That's the Bookless Review. Our third reading recommendation for the week is the new novel, What Strange Paradise? by Omar L. Akkad. The story tells the tale of an eight-year-old immigrant named Amir Yutu. Amir has recently moved to Egypt from war-torn Syria after his family sold everything to gain passage. But when Amir's uncle mysteriously boards a ramshackle boat in the dark of night, the boy follows. He's bound for the Greek Isle of Kos, the only one on the boat who will survive the trip. And it's hardly paradise once he lands. A retired colonel, bent on chasing down refugees, sets his sights on poor Amir. Fortunately, the boy finds an ally in teen Vanna Hermes. And through another kind soul on the island, the kids now have a new mission. Keep Amir safe for two days until he can get on a ferry to the mainland. Ella Kidd, author of the international bestseller American War from 2017, expertly contrasts the well-paced story of Amir's predicament with the ill-fated journey that brought him to Greece. The ragtag bunch of strangers on the boat forms an incredibly well-drawn portrait of humanity. As everyone bonds together initially, 
even with dollops of humor thrown in. But somewhere along the journey, they passed the point where human goodness gave way to the calculus of survival. A suspenseful and heartbreaking painting of the refugee crisis as experienced by two children caught in the crosshairs. And that's the book list review. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is a neat new novel by Claire Lachette. It's called Agatha of Little Neon. And as you may well have guessed by the cover, Agatha is a nun. The audio is narrated by Hilary Huber. Agatha has lived every day of the last seven years with her sisters. They work together, laugh together, and pray together. Their world is contained within the little house they share. The four of them are devoted to Mother Roberta and to their quiet, purposeful life. But when the parish goes broke, the sisters are forced to move. They landed in Woonsocket, a former mill town with quite the name. Try saying Woonsocket ten times fast, but I digress. Let me try that again. They landed in Woonsocket, a former mill town now dotted with wind turbines. They head up a halfway house where they live alongside castoffs like the jawless Tim Gary and the headstrong longmower Jill. Agatha is forced to venture out into the world alone to teach math at a local all-girls high school, where for the first time in years, she will have to reckon with what she sees and feels all on her own, which begs the question, who will she be if she isn't with her sisters? Have her sisters and the church really been her home for the last seven years? Or has she just been hiding? Disarming, delightfully deadpan, and full of searching, Agatha of Little Neon offers a view into the lives of women and the choices they make. It is a novel about female friendship and devotion, the roles made available to us, and how we become ourselves. And if you want a neat tale, check out Agatha of Little Neon. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is the neat new nonfiction title, The Almost Legendary Morris Sisters, a true story of family fiction. And it's written by Julie Clem, a New York Times bestselling author, and it's also narrated by the author. So having said that, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the book and what it's about. Ever since she was young, Julie Clam has been fascinated by tales of the Morris sisters, cousins of her grandmother. According to family lore, early in the 20th century, the sisters' parents decided to move the family from Eastern Europe to Los Angeles so their father could become a movie director. On their way, their pregnant mother went into labor in St. Louis, where the baby was born and where their mother died. Subsequently, the father left the children in an orphanage and promised to send for them once he settled in California, a promise he never kept. One of the Morris sisters later became a successful Wall Street trader and advised Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The sisters lived together in New York City, none of them married or had children, and one is even said to have had an affair with J.P. Morgan. The stories of these independent women intrigued Clem, but as she delved into them to learn more, she realized that the tales were almost completely untrue. The almost legendary Morris sisters is the revealing account of what Clam discovered about her family and herself as she dug into the past. And if you're a fan of TV series like Finding Your Roots and Who Do You Think You Are? 
this is a cool book to check out. In our third audiobook recommendation for this week, and I should note, even though it is in the video here, all of our audiobooks each week are available for instant checkout through Hoopla. So if it sounds good to you, know that the audios can be checked out immediately. So having said that, on to our third audiobook. This one's called Being Better, Stoicism for a World Worth Living in. And obviously it's a nonfiction self-help type book. It's co-authored by Kai Whitting and Leonidas Konstanskos. The audio is narrated by Liam Girard. The book offers practical answers to the urgent moral questions of our time taken from the ancient philosophy of Stoicism. 23 centuries ago, in a marketplace in Athens, Zeno of Citium, the founder of Stoicism, built his philosophy on powerful ideas that still resonate today. All human beings can become citizens of the world, regardless of their nationality, gender, or social class. Happiness comes from living in harmony with nature and, most important, humans always have the freedom to choose their attitude, even when they cannot control external circumstances. In our age of political polarization and environmental destruction, Stoicism's empowering message has taken on new relevance. In being better, Whitting and Konstanskos apply Stoic principles to contemporary issues such as social justice, climate breakdown, and the excess of global capitalism. They show that Stoicism is not an ivory tower philosophy or a collection of Silicon Valley life hacks, but instead it's a vital way of life that helps us live simply, improve our communities, and find peace in a turbulent world. Moving along to our streaming recommendations, our first recommendation is the new Netflix TV series, The Chair. It was created by Amanda Peet and Annie Julia Wyman and stars Sandra O, oh, Jay Duplass, and Holland Taylor. Briefly, The Chair is set at a major university where the first woman of color has just become the English chair and tries to meet the dizzying demands and high expectations of her failing department. The Atlantic praised the chair up and down, saying that it is Netflix's best drama in years and that the near perfect show elegantly skewers the subject of free speech on campus. So the chair is a little bit different, just like Agatha of Neon, so if you want something that's good drama and a little different, check out The Chair. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the 2016 film, Let Me Down Hard. It's directed by William DeVizia and stars Harry Chomberry, Margot Krupe, and Paul Diamidi. You can stream it from Hoopla, Amazon, and Google Play. The film tells the tale of Jack Ansley. Jack was a rock star with a hit record, a rabid following, and money to burn. He also had an ego the size of his tour bus and a soul-crushing temper to match until one night it all evaporated right in front of his eyes. Now, 15 years later, he finds himself back in Asbury Park, New Jersey, the place he couldn't escape from fast enough, and to the tattered remains of the family he'd left behind. Jack is now at a point in his life that with every opportunity exhausted, this one-hit rock and roll wonder has come home to his once broken city, itself on the rebound, to seek redemption. And if you want to know if Jack finds his redemption, you'll have to check out Let Me Down Hard, 
You can stream it for free through Hoopla, as I mentioned, and through several other streaming platforms. Our third streaming recommendation for this week is the classic film, The Taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3. The movie was directed by Joseph Sargent and stars Walter Matthau, Robert Shaw, and Martin Balsam. You can stream it from Amazon, Google, and Apple. The Taking of Pelham 123 is one of the greatest of all gritty Gotham movies. Our critic called it a movie that really catches the mood of New York and New Yorkers. This darkly funny white knuckle thriller from the director Joseph Sargent concerns four armed men who take a subway car hostage, demanding a million dollar ransom for the lives of the passengers abroad. Robert Shaw is coolly ruthless as the leader of the gang, while Walter Matthau is at his hangdog best as the cynical transit cop hot on their trail. That overview is from the New York Times, and on a viewer's note, the 1998 version of this film, because there are several versions, but the 1998 version stars Lorraine Braco and Edward James Olmos and is available for instant viewing through Hoopla. So if you have some extra time this weekend and you like action movies and gritty Gotham thrillers, you might check out a couple of versions of The Taking of Pelham 123. And finally, our Hoopla recommendation for this week is the great set The Rolling Stones in Mono from 2016. I'm tempted to call it a box set because back in the days where CDs and vinyl were popular, you would get multi-disc and album sets in a box, thus box sets. But of course, this is digital. But keeping with the fact that it's a long weekend, this is a big set. It's 149 songs recorded between 63 and 69 and during the era when the Rolling Stones began calling themselves the world's greatest rock and roll band. And as you may know about the 60s, during that era, most rock and pop recordings were recorded in mono. And if they did a stereo version, they did it as an afterthought. So mono was the form of the day. And I think that's because they didn't have the stereo stuff we have now. When I say stuff, I mean equipment. They didn't have stereos in cars or home stereos like we do today, but they were starting to trickle in. That's why they did secondary versions of stereo tracks for some songs and some albums. But in the 60s, really, mono reigned, as it does on all the 149 songs of this terrific collection. So if you have time this weekend, check out the Rolling Stones in mono, available from Hoopla. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, send me an email. My email address is rhymerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. That's R E I M as in Mary, E R L at stls.org. And a note about library hours currently, we're open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and we're closed on Sundays. The library's website, which offers a whole host of information about the library, upcoming programs and services, can be found at ssclibrary.org. StarCat and its companion app, BookMine. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all card holders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System, better known as STLS. The system encompasses all the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny Counties. You can find StarCat online at starcat.stls.org, or you can download the BookMine app from your app store. And BookMine is spelled B-O-O-K, M Y like my and E. The digital catalog and its companion app Libby. Through the digital catalog and the Libby app, you can check out ebooks, 
downloadable audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. The digital catalog is found online, stls.overdrive.com. Alternately, you could download the Libby app, that's L-I-B-B-Y, to your mobile device. And you can also check out ebooks and send them to your dedicated e-reader, like a Kindle Paperwhite, through either the digital catalog online or the app, if you wish to do so. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full-length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Dominion County Library cardholders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. You can find the Hoopla catalog online at hoopladigital.com or download the Hoopla app to your mobile device or smart TV. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library materials or services or anything else library-wise, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's phone number is area code 607-936-3713. Again, that's area code 607-936-3713. You can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs, we have five of them. We have the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at ssclbook.club and offers information on, you guessed it, the monthly Book Club for Adults. We have the Corning NY History blog, which offers weekly postings showing photos of our area way back in the day. We have the Creation Stationery blog, which is the companion blog to the library's makerspace. So there's creative postings there. We have Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells. That one's found at storymusing.blogspot.com. And then Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog with occasionally helpful how-to tech tips thrown in. That's found at ssctech.com. And briefly, here are our references of the week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. And I have to say, I'm thrilled with this cooler weather. Got my sweaters out, as you can tell. Have a great holiday weekend. <laughs>